Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Oh, hi, Sean. Welcome. Glad to have you. Well, good morning. Uh, it's such a cold day. I can't believe it's only uh, October, beginning of October, and it's so cold. I hope everyone is doing well. Okay, today we'll talk about Elon Musk and his relations with China. Elon has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, he, you know, from the the <clears throat> from his continuation of discussion of buying Twitter to his online uh, exchange with a Chinese media personality. Uh, so he's been in the news a lot. And I've been reading uh, about Elon Musk, and I found that a lot of the coverage or a lot of what other people talk about is only bits and pieces of information. So what I have gathered today is kind of a holistic view of what's really happening for Elon Musk and Tesla uh, and his relations with China. So hopefully this will be a, a good uh, presentation for you. Okay, so the first thing that we'll talk about is uh, there has been talk about Elon turning Twitter into a WeChat. You know, WeChat is this Chinese uh, do-everything app, right? It, it's, it's the combination of uh, Facebook, Twitter, and PayPal, and maybe a few other apps. So there has been a few days ago, I think on the 5th or the 4th of October, there has been media reports about uh uh, Elon Musk pot potentially turning Twitter into WeChat. And uh, we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about his relations with China or what's been going on between him and uh, the, the Chinese journalist who has been having a lively dialogue with him on Twitter. So the first thing I want to share, let me see. Here we go. Here we go. Um, can we can we see this? Oh yeah, here we go. Excellent. So yeah, that just shows you the media uh, the media reports about Elon Musk turning Twitter into WeChat. Uh, he also uh, tweeted tweeted on October fourth that he is building or considering building an app called X. It is his everything app. Now, what I think it's worth mentioning is a video, uh, a video clip in which he gave a talk back in May. Uh, I think it was the May, it was May 7, 16th. It was the All In Summit in which he talked about uh, WeChat. And the question, and the question before before I play the video, I just want to tell you what he was asked before he gave that speech. So the question was, one of the interesting things in your product roadmap is the possibility of Twitter becoming the super app with payment included. What's the vision there? Okay, so that's the question. And this is this is where he where he said, and I'm sharing this. Uh, you're going to see a few seconds of Chinese and maybe some music, and then you will hear him start talking. Okay, hold on. Let me go. Let me play this. Can you guys hear? Let me play this. <laughs> Those that have used WeChat, I think that's WeChat's actually a good model. Can you um, hear him? If you're in China, it's basically you, you kind of live on WeChat. It does everything. Um, it's sort of like Twitter plus PayPal plus a whole bunch of other things, and all roll into one with actually a great interface, and it's it's really an excellent app. And we don't have anything like that um, outside of China, so uh, I think it, such a, such an app um, would be really uh, useful um, and. It just like the utility of, of it, uh, of, of, of sort of a, a spam free thing where you could, you can make comments, you can post videos, you can, uh, you know, I think it's important for content creators to have a revenue share. Um, now, now this, this does not need to be done on Twitter. It could be done from something that's created from scratch. So it could be something new. 
Um, so really, but, but I think this thing needs to exist, whether it is uh, converting Twitter to uh, be the, the sort of like kind of all-encompassing app that, that, like I said, everything from Digital Town Square where important ideas are debated, uh, you know, maximally trusted and inclusive, and at a point where you're, you're, you sort of have a high trust situation, then then payments, uh, uh, whether it's uh, crypto or fiat, uh, can, can make a lot of sense. Just we just want something that's incredibly useful and that people love using. Um, so, that, 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 but it, it's it's either convert Twitter to that or start something new. Those are the two. But it, it does need to happen somehow. Okay. I think that's the end. See, here we go. Okay, let me come back. So <clears throat> that video, <clears throat> excuse me. So that video was, um, that speech was given in May and the Chinese got very excited. I don't think the Western media reported that. Uh, reported on that, but the Chinese got very excited because they got the idea that, oh, maybe Elon Musk will buy WeChat one day. Uh, so that, you see that clip was actually posted by um, a Chinese media. But um, later in that dialogue, in that uh, at the summit, he was asked uh, if he was uh, more likely to build it from scratch, and he said yes. So, okay. All right, so that's that. Let's and then let's talk about the main character or one of the main characters of today's discussion. Um, former chief editor of Global Times, which is the English version, which is the English mouthpiece of the CCP. Um, <clears throat> he's no longer the chief editor, but he's a commentator now. So <clears throat> he. This is his message to Elon Musk, uh, potentially building an app that's similar to WeChat. And he said, WeChat is an epoch-making product, but it grew up in the soil of Chinese society. So it's not so easy to be copied. Um, <clears throat> I will caution Elon for making an app that's similar to WeChat, simply because it's it. It basically monitors your entire daily life. It knows everything about you. Um, whoever controls that app will be too powerful. We'll have access to basically all the data about its users. Um, it tracks you know, all your financial activities, your social life, um, everything, your home life. Um, so I, I think technically, you know, he can, he can, there's no question if he wants to make an app, uh, make such an app, he can do it. But the question is, do we trust anyone for holding that amount of data about us? That's the question. Um, the, the problem in, in China is uh, Xi Jinping doesn't trust, uh, I don't think he trusts Pony Ma for, uh, for holding that amount of data, right? But so, so the question is not technically if it's doable um, or do we really need such an app or the convenience of such an app, but the question is who will control the data, who will control the app. All right, so that's enough said about that. Let's talk about what really happened between these two guys because there has really been some interesting exchanges between on, uh, going on between them. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that, that um, Hu Xijin responded to um, Elon's, Elon's poll, online poll about his peace uh, solution uh, for the Ukrainian-Russia war is this comment, right? I think a lot of you might have seen it already. Uh, he said that Elon will be taught a lesson. Uh, he has released his personality too much and he believes too much in the West freedom of speech. I think you could tell that he speaks from a very CCP mentality because in the West, there's no question about releasing your personality too much. And what do you mean by not releasing your personality too much? We're supposed to be genuine and authentic, aren't we? And so what's wrong with releasing our personality too much? So that 
is completely a CCP mentality and language. And he believes too much in the West freedom of speech. Of course, we believe in that. Um, you know, that's the, the foundation of um, democracy. So you could tell by his speech that he's speaking from a very, I don't even think he, he could hide it. I mean, that's just how they think. Um, so, and then he said he will, he will be taught a lesson. And that got people start talking about what he, what does he mean by teaching Elon a lesson? So here we have Fox News doing a piece on, well, was Hu Jin did he mean that China would teach him a lesson? What what does he mean by teaching him a lesson, right? So there's a whole uh, discussion or a program about who is going to teach uh, Elon Musk a lesson. And, and most people, from what I read, you know, assume that he is threatening or who the, the Chinese journalist was threatening Musk with a lesson from China. Let's see what he really meant. So, interestingly, uh, on the Chinese Twitter, uh, Weibo, who wrote an elaborate piece, um, basically saying the same idea, but he really explained what he was saying, and it's very interesting. And uh, if you can't read Chinese, I mean, it's, the actual piece is very long. This is just a, a quick snapshot of it. But basically, he's saying that Musk has let his ego fly high this time, putting himself in the limelight of public opinions in the West. He apparently believes too much in the West freedom of speech. And if he doesn't put the brakes on, he may be putting his business empire in jeopardy. And then he said, uh, Musk's words are treacherous from the Western's, from, from the West's politically correct perspective. So he's taking advantage of uh, the division, the, the, div the political division in the West and, um, and basically poke, you know, making fun of the Western democracy from his perspective. And he said uh, on the next page, you don't, you don't see it here because it's, it's kind of long, but he said, uh, Musk challenged not just Joe Biden's political correctness, but his strategic calculations to defeat Putin by holding EU hostage. So he over, he meaning um, Elon Musk, overestimated his influence and underestimated the power of the Iron Curtain of Western politics. So I think um, what who meant is the the western the western politicians or a, a faction of the western um political circles or the left leaning political circles will teach elon musk a lesson uh not chinese so he clearly explained that in his chinese tweet and in, i don't know if elon musk knows this I don't know if somebody on his team who speaks Chinese explained what Hu Xi Jin was talking about. But anyways, but Elon Musk responded. You probably have seen this. He responded uh, with the Chinese. And this confused a lot of us, a lot of our, us Chinese because we don't know what he, what he meant by this. It sounds like it's a Chinese translated um, by using Google Translate or some kind of a translation software because the Chinese reads a little awkward. So there were a lot of discussions about where did this come from? What did he, what did he mean? And finally, people nailed it down to a quote, an anecdote uh, from Confucius. It's, uh, it basically, the, uh, this is the original Chinese, si ti bu qing, wu gu bu fen. The, the story goes, one of the, Confucius student Zi Lu uh, went with, you know, went on a tour with Confucius, but then he somehow was separated from 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 the group. And then when he was lost, he ran into an old man. Here's a picture. I think I even have a picture. He ran into an old man, and so he polite he bowed to the old man and politely asked, "Have you seen my teacher?" And the old man replied to him. Um, 
the words 四体不勤，五谷不分，孰为夫子 ？Meaning, uh, you don't toil your four limbs. You can't tell the five grains apart. And so, who is your teacher? Implying that you may appear to be well educated and polite, but you don't do anything. So you don't know anything. Um, it's all nonsense, right? So, so um, this is it's a kind of funny where Elon Musk used an original Chinese quote that was translated into English. Yeah. Also, when this whole anecdote was translated into English,、um, I think that they translated as "men with hand in pocket feel cocky all day." So that's that's the translation of that entire Confucius student's story.、Um, and so Elon reverse translated into back into Chinese. So it got our us Chinese very confused. But that's where it came from. Okay. And then、uh, Mr. Hu responded, saying, "Man with hands in Twitter feels confident." So, all right. So their exchange has not、uh, is not, they're not done with their exchanges yet. On Friday,、uh, Financial Times published an article written by its editor Rula Kalaf. I, I think her name is Rula Kalaf. Here's is her picture. And、um, <coughs> excuse me. And in this article, oh, oh, by the way,、um, yeah, I want to mention in this article. Remember how Hu Xijin was taking advantage of the political division in this country, and basically was saying, "Well, Joe Biden will、uh, will teach you a lesson, Elon Musk."、Um, so. And then in that Financial Times article,、uh, Elon Musk did say that Joe Biden had an electric、uh, vehicle summit at the White House and deliberately didn't invite him. And then,、um, and to add insult to injury, at a big event, Joe Biden said that GM was leading the electric car revolution.、Um, so, so you could just see how.、Uh, It is true, right? So, what what the、uh, Chinese editor or commentator said or observed、uh, is true. So, anyways, so in this in the Financial Times talk, Elon Musk basically、uh, here here's I just gave you screenshots of 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 part of the article. He is concerned with the conflict in the Taiwan Strait,、uh, but he said that he's not alone in this in this pain. And he brought up Apple, and he also estimated that if the conflict、uh, breaks out, and the world economy will suffer, and he even gave a thirty percent hit、um, as an estimate. He also mentioned、um, that China, the Beijing authorities, has talked to him about. His plan to roll out to roll out Starlink in China and basically to make sure that he will not do so in China.、Uh, and then, what caused great controversy is his recommendation for peace for a peace resolution in the Taiwan Strait. He recommended a special administrative zone for 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 the region, and that's reasonably palatable. And、uh, he he said. That should be more lenient than Hong Kong, but even the Financial Times editor doubt that his proposal will be taken up. So, what? If you look at his、um, proposal, there are really just two points that annoyed people, particularly、um, people in Taiwan. First is he has clearly accepted China's、uh, one country, two systems. Mode, and he does not acknowledge、uh, the Republic of China. And the second point he made is the reasonably palatable concept. It's it's hard to define. What does he mean by reasonably palatable? And it's accepted by by who, right? So 
back when Deng Xiaoping first defined one country, two systems, he allowed Taiwan to preserve their own military. He also agreed, I mean, Deng Xiaoping also agreed not to send any mainland officials to Taiwan. So it was clearly, um, you know, allow Taiwan to retain their its own military and no CCP officials would be sent to Taiwan. So at the time it was, I mean, looking from, from our perspective now, from the geopolitical perspective now, that would be considered highly palatable. But at the time it was not acceptable to Taiwanese and even the pro-China uh, Kuomintang uh, did not find it acceptable. So now when the CCP released the Taiwan white paper earlier, they have completely removed these two conditions. And it's basically one country, one system, no one country, two systems. So I don't know if Elon Musk is aware of that or his Chinese advisors have told him so. So it's just not possible, right? So what he believes is palatable is just not not possible. And in the interview, uh, the, the, the editor wrote that Elon Musk, um, was, you know, he, he, he is, uh, he, he took, he deliberately took silence or pause before he speaks sometimes, but the longest pause, the longest silence uh, that Elon gave was following her question about China. So obviously, Elon Musk was very careful with what he said. Um, but let's see how how he uh, what kind of response what kind of response he got. Well, the response from Taiwan was not good. Um, Taiwanese people ask and say, "Well, why why Elon Musk? You know, always would like to side with." Um, like in, in, in the um, in his online poll for the for the peace resolution between Russia and Ukraine, uh, people find his recommendation not acceptable, right? And then he, he, here he he is again trying to offer another resolution for Taiwan. So people ask, is it because his gigafactory in Germany uh, has an energy crisis, and then his gigafactory in Shanghai? Um, is at a choking point um, by the CCP. So people wonder if that's the reason why he's offering his uh, peace, so-called peace resolution. I don't know, but here is a response from a, a, pol a parliament member, a member of Taiwan's National Defense and Foreign Affairs Committee um, of the uh, legislative body. I think his name is Wang Dingyu. So he said, my sincere suggestion to Elon Musk, how about let Tesla to fall under China's BYD brand and allow Tesla to have more lenient self-governing power? What do you think? Um, <laughs> I think that's a very smart response. And, and Mr. Hu, however, loved <laughs> loved Elon Musk comment. So here he said, you're, you're indeed one of the few people in the West who dare to speak out. This time I support your thoughts and recommendation on Taiwan, but I worry DPP authorities, meaning the Taiwan uh, DPP authorities will hate you as well as many US lawmakers and blah, blah, blah. And they may want to teach a lesson together. See, here he made it clear who will teach Elon Musk a lesson. So uh, we know one of the telltale traits of CCP is um, division, right? Always take advantage of other, uh, the divisions or different opinions or differences uh, in in, in your political that exist in your political enemy or in your enemy and then and tear them apart. So this guy is taking every opportunity uh, to turn Elon Musk, uh, I shouldn't say enemy or maybe enemy, um, those who criticize him against him. So you can see what this guy is doing. Now, 
on on the day on the on the following day on Friday, uh, the the spokesperson from China's foreign ministry, Mao Ning, was asked by a reporter from Reuters about Elon Musk's uh, comment in the Financial Times article, and she gave a cookie cutter answers. She basically reiterated China's one country. Um, principle and then how China does not welcome any foreign interferences, blah, blah, blah. So she gave a cookie cutter answers. And I noticed when she was giving the answer, she read from script. So she was very careful not to say anything wrong. However, that evening when CCTV uh, covered the news, I mean, CCTV doesn't have to cover such a news, right? But it chose to do so. It cranked up its condemnation of Elon Musk. So this is, oh, I think I, let me just move this. Would this be better or this? Am I blocking? Maybe let's do this. Okay, so basically it says, Musk's presumptuous comment on China's Taiwan issue uh, was met with a response from the foreign ministry. And the word presumptuous isn't, I think it's still a little soft. Um, he's, the original Chinese is Wang Yi, re, which really means conceded answer or conceded comments. And then, um, yeah, so it's basically made it very clear that China does not like Elon Musk's, Elon Musk's comment. And then it also tweaked or changed the question. And uh, when it paraphrased the question from Reuters, and it, call, it called Elon Musk's comment inappropriate comment. Um, so I think if you think, if you, let me come back. So if you think about the, what happened you know, the, the initial response was a cookie cutter response. Uh, and then a few hours later, I think they probably checked with the higher authorities on what should we do with, with, this, with this comment from Elon Musk? What should we do? And higher authorities um, basically give the di directive that we need to respond. We need to we need to give a strong response. So that's why the CCTV um, and all the state media, <coughs> excuse me, gave this rather strong uh, response um, and called his comment inappropriate and conceded. And I think what annoyed CCP is his, his revelation of uh, Beijing not wanting him to roll out Starlink in China. I think that comment probably greatly annoyed Beijing. Um, and then with that, is that the last slide? That is my last slide. So, okay. So let me quickly tell you what's happening with Tesla in China. Um So Tesla's, Tesla is not doing so well in China, or at least not as well as analyst has expected. Uh, its delivery of 344,000 cars in the third quarter was up 42% versus a year ago, and it topped Q1's record of 310,000. And it's also 35% higher than Q2. But remember, Q2 was due to the sh uh, lockdown in Shanghai, right? And then there was a, a, a slow recovery. But the 344,000 cars was still below analyst expectation of 360,000 cars. And also its delivery, the number of cars delivered um, in the third quarter is below the production. And Tesla came out, acknowledged that they have logistical challenges. Um, in delivering the cars, and it, it attributed to an increased number of vehicles in transit. I think this has to do with uh, the increasing percentage amount of cars made in the Shanghai Gigafactory is now being exported due to um, declined domestic demand in China and also increased competition. So right now, 60% of 
the cars made in Shanghai uh, are for the Chinese domestic market. 40%, let me see, yeah, or at least based on the first eight months of this year, of 2022, 60% of the cars made in China are for the Chinese market, and the rest was exported to Australia, Europe, Japan, and Singapore. Um, but the domestic demand in China is waning. Um, there was a part of it is is the Chinese economy, the the num the the wealth, you know, <clears throat> the. The, the 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 stalemate of local consumption has affected the um, the demand for Tesla cars, and also the recent energy blackout in Sichuan, where we have seen viral videos of lines um, of long lines of electric vehicles waiting for for charging for a charging station that has affected in the in the consumer confidence of EVs. And also increase the competitions because both BYD and NIO have uh, have been turning out mo models that directly target Tesla's um, Model Three because the bulk of Tesla's production, the bulk of the cars it makes in China is Model Three, but they are meeting with strong domestic. Uh, domestic brand competition from domestic brands, so everything with everything included, I think Tesla is exporting more and more of, of its cars made in China to other regions, and that explains why um, it has logistical issues that the the, the the a huge number of or I shouldn't say huge a significant amount of its cars <clears throat> are in transit. But Tesla is offering new insurance subsidies in China last month, and it's um, being used as a de facto price reduction. And some even expect Tesla to cut price next month um, to, to boost sales in China. So with that said, with, with the China's, you know, I made a video about the uh, China's economic blueprint after the 20th Party Congress. I think Xi Jinping is prepared to uh, Okay, in that video I mentioned how at, at the end of that video I mentioned the the profitability. There was a comparison of the profitability between foreign owned companies uh versus privately owned companies and also state-owned companies. It's clearly showing that only the state-owned companies' profit profitability has gone up, whereas the foreign-owned companies' profitability has dropped most significantly, followed by privately owned companies. And there's a clear direction that Xi Jinping is putting all resources on these huge nationally state-owned enterprises. So I think the chances for foreign-owned companies to be to survive in China or to be profitable is getting more and more difficult. Um, so with that all said, and also with his relations with China, I think Elon Musk has an uphill battle in China. And uh, will the Chinese government allow him to use the Shanghai Gigafactory only as a production plant for its global market? Uh, we'll have to see, right? Okay, so I've talked a lot and I'll take a few questions and and uh, see see what we have. Okay. All right, let's see. Have a... From Boy Cut China. <laughs> Hi, Lei. Any concern the self driving cars could be hacked to attack a protest event? Any concern the self driving cars could be hacked to attack a protest event? Worry about this when Volvo was purchased. Thanks, always. I have not looked into that. 
Um, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer, but it's a good question. Anyone who have who is knowledgeable in this area, please share. You could leave comments. But that's a but that's a good question. But I know that's a very good question. Definitely worth looking to. But I thank you for the question. Um, or, or I'll get back to you at some point. Thank you, Thomas Hewer. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Your slow mode is communist. Well, um, I don't mind turning off the slow mode, but there are people who are very egregious in sending out their comments nonstop. You know, I mean, 99.9% .9 of people, you know, play by the rule, but there's only 1.1% of the people who don't pl play by the rule. And they're probably paid by the communists to do that. And I don't want the 99.9% .9 of the people paying a price for their bad behavior. So if you have anyone to, 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 to blame, you blame, you blame the communist. I'm not communist. I'd love to have everyone have a timely exchange of dialogue, but I'm forced to do that because some people would send messages nonstop and take the entire a community space, and I think it's unfair to other people. It's unfortunate. All I can say is unfortunate. All right, here we have one from Don Dumf Dumfrey. Okay. Um, I think at any time you make, I feel really sorry for you because you can't seem to say a lot of things. Uh, and I feel sorry you're so limited in your vocabulary, in, in what you can say. Um, but your comments often review more about who you are than who I am or what this community is about. So sometimes people living in China, when they have been brainwashed by the CCP, or maybe you have not been brainwashed by CCP, you just cannot say what you want to say. I feel sorry for you. Um, they don't know when they say something. They do not, they seriously do not know how the world perceives them. Just like that Mr. Who, when he sent his tweet on Twitter, you know, he does not know. He is displaying his communist mentalities in front of the whole world when he tell Elon Musk that you've reviewed your personality too much. He absolutely does not know what he's talking about. So same here. So I feel sorry for you that you let the whole world see who you are. Okay, let's see. Do you think the CCP will fall in the future? Of course, I think it will fall. It's going in that direction. I think we can all see it. Sean Rice said, Tesla seems to be completely dependent on critical minerals mined only in Russia or monopolized by China. Does Musk have a choice in public stance? You raised a very good question. So oftentimes it's business versus our conscience, right? Money versus our conscience. I think ultimately we're all being tested. It's what do you, what's more important? Um, I think we have different choices, but in the end, there are a lot of people, particularly politicians, who will say the politically right things, um, but they don't necessarily acknowledge the painful decisions people have to make um, in losing their business um, to make the right decisions. So it's easy for politicians to, to sound politically correct. But on the other hand, all business people, um, in the face of money and conscience, what do you choose? I know it's a hard decision, but I think we should learn our lessons. And um, 
sometimes making the right decisions is more important than money. Because at the end of, because at the end of our life, at the end of our journey on earth, we won't remember how much money we made, but we will remember all the wrong, we will regret all the wrong decisions we made. You say CCP, you are a racist China hating troll because there is so much thing. There's no such thing. It is called CPC, only the propaganda channels. Okay, CCP is Chinese Communist Party. CPC is the Communist Party of China. Do you really see that much difference in the two versions of the world, of the words, Kevin? To it, if that's your name. If you think the difference of these, if you think the semantic differences between these two words is enough to justify to call someone a racist, then I think everyone in the world is basically a racist because we use different words to say that to mean the same thing. Then everyone is a racist. Then so there's no racist anymore. Right? That's your point. There's no racist, there's no racist in the world because we, you know, we always call we use different words. It's a semantic difference. Anyways, I find that logic very interesting. Again, I think world we could tell more about who you are than who I am when you make statements like that. So I think you should really refrain from making those statements because it's not serving you well. All right. Wow, there's a lot of... Um... Okay, so is Ruby a real currency or just worthless voucher as you said many times? Ruby is a real currency that's being used right now. I never said it's a worthless voucher. I said it's being overvalued and being manipulated. I answered your question. Okay, here's from Raymond Pua. Pua. I'm curious, Lee, how much time do you spend on research each session? By the way, my respect for your work and opinions. Um, there are videos that I spend a lot of time there uh, because I can't, I can't come to any good conclusions. There are videos that aren't that that aren't. For example, this Elon Musk video. I just I just tell you, I read what's what's in the Western media, and then I read what's in the Chinese language media. And when I say Chinese language media, there's usually the mainland Chinese, and there's the independent media based outside China. Now, what's interesting is when you compare the three you see there's a pattern. And um, so, <clears throat> for example, the, I, noticed, I noticed the Western media was talking about Elon Musk uh, turning Twitter into WeChat, like they were talk, but then they didn't give, they didn't say why. And then I, I searched on the Chinese media, everyone was talking about Elon Musk buying WeChat back in May when he made the speech at the All, All Inc. Summit. So the Chinese was all over talking about, oh, Elon Musk is going to buy uh, WeChat back in May. And then now the Western media in October is talking about he's turning Twitter into WeChat. I'm like, okay, there is a connection. So I found his video back in May. And then this video is released on the Chinese video platform because it's all over the Chinese video platforms. So you see, how long does that take me? Maybe 10 minutes. So I think my advantage is being truly bilingual and understanding both culture. Th thank you. Thank you for, for the, for the um, super sticker. Thank you, boy. Cut China. Did I say it right? Okay. Okay. All right. Have from Moto Moto, 
Have Chinese agents been known to go after Chinese people abroad who are speaking out? Oh yes, there has been reports coming out recently uh, about how the Chinese police, public security bureaus, setting up offices in overseas cities. And I was going to do a video on that, and then I got there's so many things, other things happening. So I wasn't if you guys are interested in that, but there are they are in our communities. They're active in our communities, um, doing something. Okay, all right. So it's 45 minutes. Um, I have a meeting going on soon. I'm going to cut this live a little short, um, but I thank everyone for your for your great input. And I want to do a survey to kind of get input from you guys on what kind of topics you're interested in. And I will I will start start that today. And please let me know what topics you are interested in. Okay. Uh, I turned up and you run away. Okay, un un unlocked. Okay. Is Musk truly a warrior for good? He can. He can be. He has the potential. And I think he's trying to, to, to do good. I generally believe in people's good intention. I don't, that's what I, I stay away from um, criticizing individuals, right? But it's we have to see how he battles with the CCP because the CCP is um, it taking him hostage, right? By using his gigafactory in China, which produces thirty to forty uh, between thirty to fifty percent of the entire uh, global production. So when you have a third to of half of your production or uh, cars made in China. And what are you going to do to the CCP, right? So we have to see. I think we has, he has good intention, but is he strong enough to withhold, withstand the pressure in the interest of money, in his pursuit of money? Uh, and it's a lot of money, so we'll see. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I have to run to a meeting and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.